Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. I've got a kind of a special request video that a few people have messaged me about and uh, asked that I do a, a video on it. And some of this stuff may be common sense, but tonight I'm gonna be going over uh, some safety considerations. If you're, if you're new to the hobby lasers, uh, such as the diodes or the CO2 lasers, or maybe if you've been in it for a while, uh, maybe these are some things that you need to consider and you need to start looking at uh, taking precautions with and maybe having some equipment ready just in case. So if that's something that interests you, stick around, be right back. All right guys, starting off, I'm gonna go with the most commonly asked question that I get. And that pertains to eye protection. Uh, as many of you know, if you've watched my videos, these are the glasses that I wear most of the time. These are OD6 laser safe orange glasses. And these are made uh, by, uh, I think it's called Free Mascot is the name of the company, but they're bought on Amazon. They're about $30 a pair. And they're a little more expensive than you know what you might want to pay for a set of cheap glasses because they are kind of cheaply built. But it's the lenses that make the difference. Uh, the higher the OD rating, the better. But no matter what the OD rating, you need to make sure if you're using a diode laser that they're in the range of whatever laser you have, which is typically going to be somewhere around 450 nanometers. Uh, so make sure that they operate in the range that you're using. Uh, but I will tell you that these glasses do work with most of the common lasers, such as the ComGrow, the uh, X-Tool, the Ortur, the, you know, any, any of the blue diode lasers, these guys typically will work with them. Uh, if you're into the CO2 realm, you're going to need to make sure that they're capable of, of helping you out with CO2. The CO2 glasses are typically going to be clear. They could be some other colors, but you need to make sure that the, the lenses are compatible for the range that you're using. Now, with my Monport uh, CO2 laser, this really isn't a big concern because mine has a kill switch on the outside of the machine where if you open the lid, it automatically disengages the laser. It'll continue to move and you'll think that it's engraving, but it will disengage the laser. And as long as that's working properly, shouldn't be a need for those, but just for added precaution, these aren't a bad idea especially if you're in there adjusting mirrors, adjusting things to where you may forget and uh, fire the laser, you know, inadvertently because you're, you know, leaned over there touching the kill switch or whatever. It's not a bad idea, especially if you've got your head up in there looking at it, to go ahead and just slap these guys on. Uh, that's the, really the only reason I bought them was for maintenance and repairs so that I could put them on in case, you know, the machine did fire while I was in there messing with it because my arm was laid up against the, uh, the kill switch or whatnot. So the other part of that question is gonna be for enclosures. Now, this, these enclosures that I have in my shop are not laser safe. If people come into my shop, I still require them to wear glasses. Reason being, even though this is orange plexiglass and it does cut down uh, of the blue light, you cannot see the blue light through here uh, it stops a lot of it. It is not certified as laser safe. For me, uh, it works fine because I've always got my glasses on anyway. And if I do walk by and glance over at it or look at it, it's, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, I don't run the shields on my machines. And so it is, you know, there is the more potential for the reflectivity to be a little bit brighter and maybe damage your eyes. So if you're not running the shields on your machine and you're not running an enclosure, you definitely have to have glasses. But if you're in an enclosure and it is laser safe, and as long as you keep the lid shut, you should be good. But in my opinion, guys, if just glasses, you can never go wrong with the glasses. Now, some machines come with the green glasses. And as long as they're properly rated, as long as they're you know, designed specifically for 450 nanometers, you should be good. Some machines, I think these came with a Niji, or maybe they come with an Ortur, I'm not sure. Uh, but I've gave away a few pairs of these because every machine I get comes with a pair of them. Uh, these are just like regular, the old safety glasses design, uh, and they work really well. Uh, most of the manufacturers of these safety glass, glasses, like Free Mascot that makes my other pair. I know my friend Steve, he wears prescription glasses, so he has a pair that is oversized that will fit over the prescription glasses. So if that's a consideration for you, then you may want to look at that option as far as 
selecting the right glasses. So take care of your eyes, guys. Uh, like I said, in my opinion, you can never have enough layers of protection. If I wear my glasses, when I look at my machine, whether the glasses lasers are safe or whether it is not, I'm good. Uh, so, and if anybody comes into your workspace, that's another consideration that you need to, you need to be mindful of that. Kids, even animals. I mean, I've got cats in here. So that's one of the reasons why uh, if, I'm, if I'm doing something outside of an enclosure, I lock the cats out because I don't want them hurting their eyes and I really don't want them losing a piece of a tail. So there we go. Uh, the number two thing that I get the most questions about is fire. And there's several different things that you can do to prevent fire. One, of course, is don't use a wooden enclosure. <laughs> but for most of us, that's just not practical to have an all aluminum enclosure or an all acrylic enclosure or whatever the case may be, which acrylic will burn. If you don't believe me, come watch my scrap pile some days when I'm cleaning out my scraps. So unless you want to have an all metal enclosure, fire is still a risk. Now, I recommend that any workspace that you're going to be using a laser over, whether you're using a honeycomb or whether you're not, whether you're not doing any cutting or whether you are, put a metal plate between the whatever the wooden surface is, table or whatnot, and your machine. Whether, it, whether it's the one that came with your honeycomb or whether it's another one. I actually use a thicker piece of actual steel instead of aluminum underneath my honeycombs in my enclosures. Uh, the secondary enclosure, I do have the, uh, the metal that came with the, with the honeycomb and it works fine. It's aluminum, it's a little bit lighter, it's easy to drill holes in if you want to mount it in there to make sure it doesn't move out of the way. But you need to make sure in your enclosure that you do have a metal surface below your material because as that laser comes out of the back of that material and gets way out of focus, you're actually more likely to start a fire out of focus than you are if you're in, entirely focused. If it's entirely focused, typically it's just going to vaporize the wood as opposed to burn it. But if you're out of focus, it will burn a lot better. It actually has more tendency to start fires from my experience with both CO2 and diodes. So that's the first thing is the prevention of said fire. Uh, second thing is I have three stages of fire uh, suppression system in my shop. I got the old go-to right here that if, if, if you're paying attention and you're close, this is really all you need. Uh, this is just an old Windex bottle or old cleaner bottle and I put some water in it. Just straight out the tap, put some water in there. Uh, if I'm doing cardboard or something like that and I get a little bit of flame up, all it takes is just a little, just a couple little spritz and flame's gone. Uh, this is great, but this isn't going to get you, if you, if you leave it uh, unattended and the flames get too bad, this is not going to be adequate, okay? The second level of fire response here at the Clack Shack is these little guys, okay? This is a, basically it's just a little aerosol can, kind of, it almost like a hairspray can or, or some type of you know, lubrication or something like that that comes in a can, it's the same thing. It's just fire suppression chemicals packaged in a bottle that works a lot like spray paint. Uh, this stuff here is made for kitchen fires. Uh, it sprays four times longer and easily fits in your kitchen cabinet. It's pretty handy to have around. This is a, I mean, if you've got a small fire and you have nothing else, this is, is good to have. Okay, it's, it's fairly simple the way you use it. it. It works like a can of spray paint. Basically, you remove the top, push the button. You know, aim at the base of the fire, as my fireman friends will tell you. You always aim at the base of the fire, not the flames. So, if any of you didn't know that already. And then the third level is this guy, okay? With these guys, I strongly recommend that they sell two different kinds. They have the automotive, and they have the kitchen version, okay? The kitchen version, this is, I know this stuff is made for kitchen fires, but like I said, that's my secondary. That's, that's kind of the mediation between that and this. Uh, I would recommend the automotive version per se, uh, because you don't have any vegetable oils or grease or anything like that. And so the chemical compound that you want to introduce to the fire in the situation of a laser is gonna be more you know, closely related to a vehicle or a boat fire because you're gonna have wood, you're gonna have electrical materials, you're gonna have plastics and stuff like that. So I go with the automotive slash marine style uh, fire extinguisher for my shop. Now, the next level 
is call the fire department. Because if you can't handle it with one of these three, you're going to need some professional help. And those guys are always at the station washing trucks, sleeping, eating, you know, you know how typical firefighter stuff. So they would be more than glad to come out and help you. Uh, that, would be, <laughs> that would be when it's gotten really bad. Hopefully, though, if you do what I'm telling you and put metal under your machine, don't leave your machine unattended while you're using it, hopefully you won't run into that situation. Another thing that I do, and if you have proper, proper ventilation inside your enclosure, this will work. If you don't have proper ventilation inside your enclosure, it will not. Uh, I actually have a smoke detector mounted on the back wall of my enclosure. As long as my exhaust fan is running and I'm cutting and it is producing the amount of smoke that would typically be produced by laser engraving, my smoke detector does not go off. In the event that there's a small fire inside there that generates more smoke than that little tiny 0.08 millimeter dot of laser is capable of producing and it gets to where the, the air evacuation system cannot get it out of there, then I wind up with a, you know, alarm from the smoke detector. And I can verify it works because occasionally I'll forget to turn my exhaust system on and when I do, it goes off every time. Now, it's not a bad idea if you have, especially if you work in your garage, uh, most houses don't come with smoke detectors already installed in the garage. You can go to Walmart and you can get one of these little smoke detectors that'll work for 10 years. Uh, and you can just take a screw and put it on the wall or you could just, I mean, you could technically just take some sticky tape and stick it to something. But put it near where your workstation is for your laser. That way if you're in the garage, you're working with your laser and you know, kids scream, yell, holler, you know, UPS guy pulls up, whatever may happen and you do walk away <clears throat> and something bad happens with your laser, if you've got that smoke detector relatively close to where your enclosure is, hopefully you'll get an early warning enough that one of my three methods of firefighting will be enough to get it put out, uh, as long as you're not gone too long. Another thing I hear from guys is, you know, using cameras to view remotely. I do have a camera in my enclosure. If I do have to leave, I, I, I have an app on my phone that I can view my camera and make sure I don't have a fire inside my enclosure. I try to avoid doing that at all costs because the response time to get back out here, especially with my pine box enclosures, it, things may be really bad by the time I can get here. So I try to avoid that if at all possible. But there are those times that something comes up and you, you, know, you don't want to stop that burn. It maybe it likes five more minutes and so that's pretty handy. But do that at your own risk, guys. All right, the next hazard that needs to be considered with laser engravers is gonna be the, the smoke and the fumes. Smoke's not as big of a concern with me uh, as fumes. Typically, if it gets too smoky in your workspace, you're gonna pack up and you're gonna leave. You're gonna open some window, turn a fan on, whatever the case may be. So typically speaking, smoke I'm not, is not really a concern for me. However, a lot of materials, whether it be plywood from the glue that is used on that plywood, uh, you know, using these different agents that you use to mark glass, mirrors, or whatever. All of that material, when you hit it with a laser and it obliterates that material into tiny, tiny little molecules. And I can vouch for you that even though you can't see that dust, you're still breathing that dust. Some of that stuff can be toxic. Some of it can cause allergic reactions. I have had the situation with certain woods that when I engrave certain woods, such as black walnut, the powder that is expelled from the black walnut, when you inhale enough of it, it causes some severe respiratory issues and I have suffered it. Some of you guys have witnessed it on my channel because I could not quit coughing the next day. So those are things to consider. Uh, that typically only happens to me when I'm working outside an enclosure, if I'm doing on a table or if I'm doing a large piece that will not fit inside an enclosure, uh, especially in the winter time when the doors are shut. As long as I have the work pieces in my enclosure, Typically, all the smoke, the fumes, and even those little tiny particulates that get in the air are expelled outside the house. Another thing that I would consider if I were you and I did a lot of heavy lasering in my attic or in my garage or other small building is get you a really, really small micron uh, sawdust slash dust collection system in your workspace. Uh, these things use HEPA type filters 
and it basically just recycles the air through there and filters it and gets a lot of that stuff out. Is it going to be 100%? No. The, 100, the, the best bet is to expel that stuff out into the world. But if you're in a you know basement like my friend, my friend Steve's in a basement, places like that, and, and maybe if you don't have a way of expelling that outside, then maybe you would want to try to expel as much as you can, use some kind of purifier, but then also have you an air scrubber, air filtration system as well to kind of pull up any more particulates that may be in the air. Because you can look inside your enclosure. If you don't believe me, look inside your enclosure at that real fine layer of dust that's on everything. So that's something to consider. With that said, mentioning enclosures and using enclosures, enclosures are a great idea. And the reason why is if you have, like I do, cats that like to jump on tables, or if you have kids, little small people, that like to reach up on tables and stuff like that, an enclosure is a really good way to make sure there's no physical contact between a person or animal and that laser. It also serves to help you collect your smoke and fumes. It also helps protect your eyes. So enclosures are a really, really valuable thing for safety. So if you don't have one, look at getting one, even if it's just cloth, I mean, or the fabric material, get one of those. I mean, because nothing else, it helps protect your eyes and helps keep animals and small people from reaching up in there and playing with the laser. Uh, I've had kids, I've raised two, and you guys know how it is. You got a lot, you got a you know, blue flashing light. They walk up there, they stick their hand. That could be really, really terrible for a small kid. Uh, some of these lasers, the, the diode lasers, the, the more power output they have, the more damage it could cause to especially fingers, little small fingers. So that is not something that you want to have happen in your shop. So I hope this helps, guys. I know there may be a lot of you guys that are going to be getting one for Christmas, maybe looking at getting one. Maybe you've talked your wife into getting you one, or maybe you're just going to Christmas yourself and go ahead and get one. So, and a lot of people have asked me and they're like, what are some of the considerations? What are some of the things I need to consider? And I'm not telling you that this is all of the things that you need to consider, but these are the things that when I'm asked about it, that come to my mind. And I just want to share it with you to try to make sure that everybody gets through the holiday season, especially, you know, you don't want to get your new laser and then set your house on fire. Uh, small fires would be a blessing. Uh, big fires would be terrible, and I don't want to see that. I see enough people messaging me with the little small fires that just melt the shroud off of their machine, maybe melt a belt or two. Those fires are bad enough. You know, it could be much, much worse. And here at the shack, I mean, let's face it, guys, if I get a fire gets loose in here, this place is going up like a Roman candle. So that's why I try to make sure I have countermeasures and I keep an eye on my machine at all times. And I strongly recommend that you do the same. So hope that helps guys. If it does, if you like the video, by all means, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, uh, tell everybody about it. You can feel free to share. I want everybody to have a safe and fun, but yet creative holiday season this year. And with Christmas coming up, I'm, I just, it, it, it kind of got on my heart that maybe I needed to put this out there before somebody got a laser and accidentally, you know, lost their house or caused harm to some of their family members. So until next time, guys, as always, be safe and have a good day.